Hey, what's up? Hi, how's it going? Good, how about you? Doing good. Sorry if that lawnmower is annoying in the background. <laughs> no, no, I can't, I, I can't hear it at all. I had been doing my Zoom calls in my backyard, but there's like a forest behind where I live and the birds kept like changing the mic over like for whoever's speaking. So I'm like, okay, I'll come to front and now someone's mowing their lawn. No, 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 not a problem at all. So what's, uh, how's everything? Where, where you live? I'm living in Oklahoma right now. Okay. So you guys are, are still at uh, stay, stay at home orders or everything kind of coming back to normal? Yeah, it seems like things are like on Friday. That's when businesses are going to start opening up and stuff. So I don't know if that's really going to change much for me though. But um, yeah, so I, our team, we, we're kind of getting together for like training supposedly in two weeks. Um, I joined like the scrapyard dogs and we're going to be having exhibition games against you triple SA pride the teammates play again or play before. So we're supposed to be getting together on the 20th. So okay. just kind of waiting to hear what's going to happen if we're going to get together or not. Yeah. I think I spoke to um, last week, Kelsey Stewart. I think she's playing on that, on that team as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's pretty much most of our USA team is going to be playing on that team. Just kind of stay in shape. Keep playing. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So let's get into it. When, um, so where did you grow up and, and talk about your uh, early softball, you know, beginnings? Did you, uh, did you kind of take to the game right away or did you, you know, did you, did you have siblings that played? What, what made you fall in love with softball and all that stuff? Um, so for me, I am the youngest of four and my parents, they just, they really wanted to try to keep us active and like stay in sports, stay busy in sports and everything. So it was, uh, I have two older sisters and older brother and we just kind of played every sport possible. And so for, it was my oldest sister that actually really took the liking in softball, Samantha. And she's actually currently the head coach of Mississippi state right now. Mm. And so I think it was when she wanted to start playing competitive softball, that's when my parents started to like get the, me and my other sister into competitive softball into the whole club ball scene and so yeah that was kind of when it started and growing up going through high school and stuff we all still played uh two sports in high school and um yeah I think for me when softball really started taking off for me I think it was more like when I was younger my parents were making me get into softball and then when I got into pitching it was more of you know I always hear stories where pitchers are like oh you know I just wanted to keep pitching when I was younger mm. but I honestly hated pitching when I was younger. Oh, really I did not like it I did not like the, being like the center of attention or anything and so I think it was just I just learned to love it I think it was mm. just we, when I was around 14 our team wasn't very good we weren't we were one of like the worst teams in our organizations and so I think for me I, I started to like realize that if I really started to work hard at pitching then our team would start to mm. play better and our team would start to win more games and so I think that's when I started to learn to love it when I just started working harder at it that's cool so club ball um when you were growing up playing softball that was important like that was that you know that was pretty competitive still and all that stuff and help with the recruitment process oh yeah um especially at a younger age just to be able to you know keep playing softball year round um I still play basketball year round and stuff but I think softball is just softball and baseball they're just such a different sport where it's like mm. you just have to like continue to like uh, keep practicing like the techniques and the mechanics and stuff and so that stuff it kind of it could go away a little bit if you like don't touch on it like for like a whole season and stuff like a, like a whole winter or a whole spring or something so yeah that club ball was definitely important for the recruiting process mm -hmm. um, it's very rare for me at least hearing of girls that have gotten recruited that didn't play club ball um, it happens but I think you know it's you're more likely going to be seen from colleges if you're playing for the club balls that are going to, oh, he's getting closer. I hope he's not getting hotter. Um, all right, it's all if, good. If you're going to, like, the showcase tournaments for club balls. So, yeah, it was definitely important. Yeah. So did you, was it always Oklahoma? Is that where, you, like, your dream school was? Or, like, what was that process like, the recruitment process? Um, actually it wasn't. I'm from California. I'm very Bay Area girl. Um, so going to Oklahoma, you know, when I told 
my classmates and teachers and like yeah I'm going to Oklahoma and they're just like what why is that? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think for me when I started thinking about colleges and thinking about the recruiting process um I didn't know what that was all like I didn't really have a dream school I'm like okay I'll just go to the local small school because they have pretty colors mm. <laughs> um, but I think you know the more I started thinking about schools and figuring out where I wanted to go I didn't know and so I wanted to make sure my list had a vast major uh, just a wide range of schools so I had on my list I made a list about 20 schools and so it was small schools big schools local schools schools yeah. far away and schools in you know that had uh, that were in like big conferences and stuff and small conferences just kind of everything and my sister actually Samantha she um she went to Oklahoma, and so she okay. went to Oklahoma before me. And so, you know, I wanted to kind of get the out-of-state experience. I wanted to, you know, get, like, the small-town school experience and stuff. And, you know, with going far away for uh, for school and having family there still and making it kind of easy on my parents to come visit us both, that definitely helped. And so, you know, there it was funny when I was narrowing down my schools. It was just I just kept thinking about Oklahoma and just how it felt like home and everything. And so I just I couldn't make a decision to go somewhere else without thinking of like, oh, I want to go to Oklahoma. And so you know, it just it felt right, and it still feels right. I'm still living here. Yeah, yeah. I would have definitely, if uh, knowing like your story, I would have been like, you're definitely going to UCLA, like just because you're California, all that stuff. Like I would have said UCLA or like one of those California schools. But you know. Everything happens for a reason, and you know, kind of. Yeah, I think you made the right choice based off your 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 career at Oklahoma. You're an Oklahoma, you know, legend. So, thanks. Yeah, I I feel like I made the right choice too. It's, I'm glad I came out here, and it's it was hard not wanting to go to. I mean, like not choosing a California school. I feel like I would have wanted to stay, especially when I was mm. in high school. That was like when the it was the Pac-10 at the time. That was when the yeah. Pac-10 was really dominating and stuff. And but going to Oklahoma and just seeing know how much support was behind not only the softball team but like just the athletic department in general is really cool and it's something that you know I, I couldn't really turn down yeah and what what was your Oklahoma like uh you know your experience like did you did you go there because of the coaches obviously you had the, your sister there so that must have helped but was you know you clicked with the coaches you could grow there like was that kind of part of the decision as well yeah I think just with coach Gasso um she she reminded who's been me there of, forever right like I mean, oh, she yeah, was there she has, uh, since like the 90s um yeah. so I think with her for me uh a bit, one of the most influential coaches I had was my high school basketball coach mm. and she's she's kind of she's kind of a legend at our high school and like she's like a nationally known high school coach but she was really hard on us and you know I think it she definitely made me who the athlete I am today and I saw a lot of her in coach Gasso and not only that with how coach Gasso just demanded the best out of us but she really cared for us how we grew off the field as mm -hmm. much as she did on the field and you know still a testament to this day because I'm still able to you know come to Oklahoma, have a relationship with her, and she still helps me out. Like, I'm able to call her up as if she's my mom when I'm trying to make important decisions in my life. So she's someone that just genuinely cares about her girls on her team. Um, yeah, I think that was a big decision and that, or a big factor for me. And then also, this is going to sound – I don't know if – <laughs> It sounds a little weird, but for me, <laughs> when I was choosing a school, like for academically, I'm like, okay, I want to choose to go to a football school because if they have to get the football athletes to graduate, like they'll have to get the other athletes to graduate. <laughs> I'm like, I want to go to a football school. So that was another factor. And, you know, coming to Oklahoma there, the, just the academic support was incredible. They just, they really helped us learn how to manage our schedules, manage our classes and make sure that we were in the best position to succeed in the classroom. And so it was great experience on that side. Yeah. And, uh, and definitely the, the softball, obviously, I mean, softball, the program prior to you going there, obviously it's, it's a well-known program, but it, I don't want to say it was a drought, but I mean, I don't, uh, I think you guys went there, your, your class and you guys obviously kind of, had a lot of success. I mean, describe like the 2012 year where you guys came up a little bit short. Um, were you that much hungrier going into 2013 year? Like what, how did, how did that 2012 year shape you for the 2013 year? Oh, for sure. I think um, we were, 
somewhat surprised, I guess, in 2012 to make it to the national championship. Mm. Um, I think it was our goal, obviously. Uh, the year before, in 2011, that was the first time that we had made it back to the World Series. I think oh, the program had made it back and I want to say, five or six years. And so it was kind of our goal to get the program, getting OU back to the World Series. And so in 2011, yeah. we get to the World Series, we achieved our goal, and then it was just kind of like, okay, now what? Like, we achieved yeah. our goal. And so going into 2012, it's like, okay, like, we're going to make the World Series. Like, the goal is to make it farther, like, get to the championship game. And so I think for us in 2012, like, we – it's, you know, when you think about sports and, like, especially softball, baseball, you think, like, whoever the, the hottest team at the time, like, they're going to win the mm, championship. Definitely. Usually. And so, for 2012, like, we felt like we were the hottest team. And we just had so much momentum going into every single game that we had the World Series. And so, going in the championship, um, you know, us in Alabama, we were both kind of, like, the hottest teams at the time. And so... For us, um, going into game three and then having the momentum and then losing it and with the whole rain situation, yeah. it was it was tough. It was, it was very tough to swallow. And I think, you know, till this day, uh, eight years later, it's still tough to swallow. Uh, but I think that's just what makes sports so special, being able to, to get those emotions out of you. And um, going into 2013, you know, I think – our whole team, we were just on the same page. You know, everyone knew that like we needed to give it our all to make it to the championship game and give it our all to be able to, you know, win that championship game. And I think in 2012, what we learned was, you know, we can't just rely on one bat of Lauren Chamberlain. We can't just rely on one arm. And so in 2013, that's when you saw our team really become like such a complete team. Mm. You know, I always say like in some of our biggest games in 2013, our the bottom of our lineup won the game for us. You know, they're the ones that came up clutch. And you know, even uh, Michelle Gascoigne, she was the other pitcher with me on staff, and she was winning the biggest games. And so it was really cool to see how complete our team was, and just how much you know we were. Everyone was able to step up and not just rely on someone else on the team. Yeah, and then also, you know, describe the emotions going into the to that championship game, the extra inning game where, you know, unfortunately you give up that home run and then, you know, uh, the next inning you kind of lead things off with the – I mean, it goes down in history as far as one of the, the best rallies and kind of the most exciting game in, in college, you know, softball World Series. I mean, I remember watching it, you know, live going, this is, this is crazy and, you know, feeling bad for you on the mound. You know, you give up the three-run home run, not to open up any wounds because we know how – how it ended, but, you know, describe the emotions, how the real low emotion to all of a sudden real high winning that game. Yeah. Um, you know, going through that game, just thinking about it, um, you know, Ellen Renfro, she was pitching for them. And, you know, usually like when you're facing like a dominant pitcher, a pitcher that's on, it's like they usually have like one or two good pitches. And she happened to have about seven pitches, mm. I remember. And it seemed like every single one of those pitches was on. So it's like <laughs> – out talking to our hitting coach it's like I don't know what pitch to sit on like she's getting me with this and then she's getting me with that and it was just Mm. she was all over the zone with all of her pitches she was on one and it was hard for us as hitters and you know thinking about like the the whole process of like the whole entire game like we didn't know what inning it was we didn't realize it was you know the 11th inning at the time and uh gave up the home run to Maddie Shipman I remember it was supposed to be a drop ball in and I did not get that ball to drop mm. people were like oh it was a curveball in the play I'm like it's supposed to be a drop ball but, <laughs> uh, you know she's an incredible hitter she's always you know she's always been a tough hitter for me to pitch to and so um kind of when we gave up the home run you know I think it would have been easy for me to think that oh, okay game over like yeah. game's done for. but you know I think just with how how successful of a season we had it was because we were so successful because our team you know we just didn't let up we always knew that we were going to win in a way not in an arrogant way but just we just trusted our process I guess along the way and so um so that rally I remember I I led things off accidentally I guess I popped the ball up to the second <laughs> yeah and, it, and I made it to second base um Funny story, which is that. real key because you 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 never stop hustling. Which is like you made it to second base because yeah. normally you see it all the time, baseball and softball. Oh, a pop up sure. like that, the person might be throw Very the bat beautiful. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny because so that pop up a couple of weeks before in our practice, um, 
you know, we were scrimmaging, I think, and someone had popped it up and they barely ran it out to first. Coach Gasso was yelling at us, like, run your, run, run your pop-ups up, run to first base. Mm. And so I was pro- either the next batter up or two batters after that girl. And I popped the ball up and I just remember, you know, I was trying to like run it out. Like at first I was like looking at it. I was like, oh no, run to first. And I tripped out of the batter's box. When I tripped out of the batter's box, Coach Gasso's back was to me. And so when she turned around, I was only halfway down the oh. line. And so she sees me, she's like, what did I just say? And so our team ended up having to run. We did oh. have to do like suicides across the field. And I remember I told her, I was like, I tripped. She didn't see it. She didn't mm-hmm. care. And so like from then on, I just remember pop up, like sprinting to first base. And mm. so it was just like something like not even thinking about just like, okay, going to first base, she dropped it. Okay, keep going to second base. And, you know, I just, I just remember thinking like, okay, um, you know, got like did my job, like not thinking too much of the result. Cause that's yeah. when, you know, that's when you could really like hurt yourself in a, in a game, thinking about the whole result. But, you know, th- when I think for us, we were just thinking one bat at a time, just keep passing the mm. bat. And like I said, the bottom of the lineup, they came in clutch for us in that game. Yeah, that was that, that was an awesome game. I still get uh, excited <laughs> watching that. So that's that's your last college, like, I mean, experience winning the national championship, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. It was great to be able to finish on a high note. Um, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, it, was, it was great to be able to finish that way. <laughs> and, I mean, Oklahoma obviously was a well-known softball school prior to, but do you guys feel like your class, your team kind of maybe, you know, let's say – put Oklahoma back on the map because all of a sudden you guys leave and then a couple years later they went back to back national championships. Yeah. um, I think, you know, for us coming in, I know for me thinking like when I was choosing Oklahoma, it's like I wanted to go to a school that like I could like help the program get to the world series and like help win a national championship. But also it's like, I wanted to go to school that I knew that was capable of winning a national Mm. championship. Like, I know Coach Gasso, obviously, she had won in 2000. And so it's awesome to be able to, like, see the 2000 team put Oklahoma, you know, school from the Midwest, Big 12, on the map during a Pac-10, heavy Pac-10 era yeah. back in the early 2000s. And for us being able to see how the program took off after us, um, it's awesome just because, you know, we – seeing the recruits that are coming through Oklahoma now, it's like, you're getting like some from like the top football team, some of the top mm. of the country, which for us, it's like, it was more of a surprise when we had high recruits coming to Oklahoma. And so it's awesome to be able to first off, see those top recruits choose in Oklahoma and then just seeing how those recruits are, are performing and being mm. able to like thrive in the world series in those national championship moments. You know, you think, that's the reason they wanted to come to Oklahoma, being able to like get OU to the national championship and win the national championship. And so it's cool to be able to come back. You know, um, I've, I was in Japan the past five and a half years until 2018. So mm-hmm. last year I was a volunteer coach for Oklahoma and being able to see just how much the program really has grown, like in person, it was, it's been really special to see. Mm, does your sister say, hey, why are you helping out them? Come help me out at Mississippi State um yeah she's been trying (laughs) I was a volunteer coach there in like 2015 I think Mm. but then I was I was off in Japan so I was only there for about two months but yeah um I think she she does try to get me there but Mississippi is even farther from home than Oklahoma (laughs) more of a hassle to get to (laughs) absolutely so from your college career you go straight to the the NPF league correct Mm -hmm. yeah and so what is this league that any, I, I know what the league is, but anybody listening, we've had a lot of softball, you know, um, different personalities come on here and explain this league. Um, this league is like a league for the next level for college softball, but also you, you, you said, you mentioned you, you went to Japan. So is it a league that is, I get it that it's competitive, but it's obviously, it doesn't get as much love as the MLB for guys. And it's unfortunate. Is that why you went to Japan and played for like kind of a different, you know, more serious type of softball? Um. Yeah, so MPF, it was, it's the professional league here in the States. And so mm. the thing is, the league's only about two and a half months. So, yeah. you know, it ends like in mid August. And the Japan League, it goes on in the spring and the fall. So it just mm. kind of, it worked out where the leagues didn't uh, intertwine at all. And so I would miss maybe training camp, but it was like I was getting in game shape when I would be in Japan. So the Japan League is definitely the, I would say, the most like developed and, 
best run league right now in the in the world um for they softball. Have, yeah for softball mm. so they have about 12 teams they have a upper league and then a bottom league and then there's like club balls uh, teams as well but the upper league has about 12 teams I want to say the bottom league has about 10 teams mm. and so they have like a developed kind of system going on there and um you know they're the teams are like uh are run by like corporations I guess so I played for Toyota Industries um there's Toyota Motors there's Hitachi there's a hospital a bank and they haul softball teams and so um, a lot of the teams, the girls will have jobs, like part-time jobs with the company. And then when it's in season, when they're out of season, they're like full-time employees for them. Mm. So for my team, the Japanese girls, they would go and work, they'd have their day jobs in the morning and then I'd meet them in the afternoon and then we would like have our practices and stuff. And um, yeah, I think I, I really enjoyed playing in Japan just because, you know, it kept me in game shape all year mm. long. I was able to, you know, it was a totally different setup than the MPF. Um, MPF for most of the year that, years that I had played, it was either four or five teams, which was, it ha which came with its own challenges. I would say, you know, college, you're used to facing a team once, mm, twice, one time, yeah. three times, you don't really, maybe one time you face a team three times, but yeah, you'd really only face them once or twice. And so for the MPF, we were facing the same teams <laughs> in that two and a half month period. And so that definitely, it, it came with its challenges, which was good for me to be able to, you know, figure out like how I could approach a team differently since I'm seeing them constantly. And, um, yeah, I think just it came with these challenges. You're obviously facing some of the best hitters because uh, they're facing the best pitchers. And so mm. it's kind of just like everyone was kind of getting better and better the more you saw each other. And so, you know, um, I've, I was on the USA Pride until, I guess, last year. But I was kind of off and on since I was with USA the past two years. And um, now you, uh, the Pride has parted ways with the MPF. And so Pride's kind of on their own right now. And, you know, they still have the likes of Jesse Warren, Jessica Burrow, Sierra Romero, Sid Romero. Yeah. And so the team is still together. And now um, I'll be playing with Scrapyard Dogs this summer. And they're kind of partners right now. So mm. it's kind of like an exhibition thing going on. They're working together. at, And we're going to be doing exhibition games at what's – I'm saying this as if it's going to happen, just, you know, thinking optimistically, oh, but yeah. yeah, so we're, uh, we'll be playing at USSA tournaments this summer, just kind of stay in game shape, grow the game still until I guess, uh, Scrapyard and Pride figure out where they want to go from there as terms mm -hmm. of the league. So, yeah. What's the biggest difference between like kind of American softball and, and over in Japan, Japanese softball? Um, I think the biggest difference, like I said, just having to face the same batters over and over mm. again for right now. And then I think, you know, I guess just like their mentalities and like their approaches where, yeah. uh, you know, with Americans, we, you, you could kind of see like their strengths and, you know, obviously with Americans, it's like, Oh, our strength is here. It's like, we're going to keep going off of that. We're Japanese. I think their strength is more of like on the, they see what your strength is as a pitcher and it's like, okay, I know you're going to be pitching me a drop in. I'm going to be sitting on that drop in the entire time. Mm. And then if you don't, if you don't throw them a drop in that entire at bat, it's like, they'll take the strike out because they'll be sitting it for the next at bat. And so mm. it's kind of like their, their approach with like hitting is just totally different from what we see in America. And, um, you know, they just, they're both challenging in their own ways. I don't necessarily know which side is harder. People always try to ask me that, like, oh, what's harder, pitching yeah. Japanese hitters or American hitters? And it's like, they're both hard in their own ways. Mm. That's, a good, that's a great point. So um, Team USA, obviously, unfortunately, this year, it kind of obviously got postponed due to circumstances, but you guys would have been gearing up for, for Olympic play. Um, how long have you been playing on Team USA for? Quite quite a while now, right? Um, yeah, a couple years right now. So I started my first year at the USA was in 2011 and 2012 when I was in college, and then I um, I was on the team for the World Championship team in 2018, 2019, and now 2020. So. Mm. And how's that dealing with? The, I mean, the different. I mean, that's the best of the best. So I mean, you go to college, you're arguably the top pitcher 
um, still one of the top pitchers when you go to Team USA, but like sharing kind of let's say the spotlight with another player on the uh, on the team is that is that tough to do, or it's kind of like you're more mature and you're like, hey, I'm glad I, I'm playing on this team after college because I don't know how I would be if I played on this, you know, at 20, 21 years old. Yeah, I think I've um, I've gotten used to being on like a team with a staff since I've yeah. been on Pride. You know, Pride, we kind of had that. Uh, battery in a way where we would have about eight or nine pitchers at the time seven pitchers mm. and so I've gotten used to that where it's like being on like like uh being on a team with the staff um with our team with our pitching staff right now it's it's very cool to be on and it's very interesting because it's like you have pitchers from different eras where it's like Rachel Garcia she's like yeah college pitcher right now and it's like Monica and Kat they were the college pitchers back in the early 2000s and stuff and so for to be able to see like the like some of the best pitchers from colleges from like the different eras because mm. softball's changed so much since the early 2000s but they're still able to be such dominant pitchers and so being able to be on a staff like that it's been awesome to be able to learn to see you know what makes these pitchers so success successful and being able to pitch alongside for them and then it's also awesome to be able to like see how how much we all complement each other in our own mm. ways you know, we have Rachel and Allie are the two righties, and uh, they're more of like rise ball pitchers. And then uh, obviously Monica, she throws hard. She kind of goes up and down. And then me and Kat, we're just, we're like the down ball pitchers. Um, mm. Yeah, it's been cool to be able to see how we're able to complement each other. And then, you know, say when me and me and Kat go back to back, seeing like how our different approaches are like to the same type of hitters. Mm. Yeah, well, we look forward to it. We look forward to it. So we hope that obviously next year you guys get it in and, uh, you know, we know that you guys are going to make us proud. So let's talk about you have been a, a partner, I guess you could say, for Rawlings. Ball yeah. I got your, your, your glove right here. Do you use a heart of the hide or do you use a liberty? Um, right now I'm using heart of the hide just because okay. I've been going back and forth with uh, – with pitching and first base and it just shapes well for me but all my life or I guess not all my life but since high school college and then for, in for pride I, I was using a liberty gotcha so. gotcha so yeah Rawlings has uh uh oh so you could play you play first too right mm -hmm. I just started playing first again in the past few years um just with how they're limiting the USA ro or the Olympic roster so you know usually it's like we would have about 20 21 girls on the team and now we only have 16 so mm. playing first to try to add some more positions <laughs> didn't you didn't you in a game I think I recall that I saw the video where you were pitching they took you out they put you at first and then they put you back in the game too yeah that kind of uh started it again I mean I played first going through high school and then a yeah yeah, yeah. College. yeah and then so in the world championship yeah I was I hadn't been playing first. I was only pitching that season, and they wanted to bring me back in the game, and they were just bringing Rachel in for a righty-righty matchup, and so they threw me in at first. Luckily, she struck out the batter. They ended up doing that twice that game, and she struck out the batter both times. So, yeah, I think that's where that kind of started, and they're just like, okay, well, we could actually kind of use this, especially with Rachel and Allie playing, for, uh, playing first as well, and so being able to, like, go back and forth, like, that would be huge. <laughs> Did they tell you they were going to do that prior to, or did they no, kind of, they just, oh. Yeah, they just kind of threw it out there. And, you know, <laughs> I, I knew they were coming out to take me out. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'm done for the rest of the game. Mm. And they're like, wait, no, uh, you're not <laughs> done. We're going to put you up first. So I was kind of excited, actually. So it was funny because I think it kind of distracted the Japanese girls because they're so mm. used to seeing me on the mound or at the plate. They don't see me any other positions. And so – Seeing, seeing me at first base and they're just like what is going on so, <laughs> kind of cool playing mind games with them <laughs> that is definitely a mind game so I guess we'll be on the lookout for that for the Olympics so back to your, your glove this is the Liberty glove so anybody that's watching this because uh, I'll put the video up later like that's your signature logo can you explain like kind of the meaning to that I think it's cool and, and I feel like I know you because I've seen I've ripped the tag off but I've seen your your face on these Rollins goes for like <laughs> a decade now so it's finally nice to talk to you so <laughs> um so hibiscus uh just kind of coincides with me and my name's Kehlani Hawaiian name um I'm part Samoan and so yeah I think it, it was just kind of something that set me apart I guess there's very really not that many 
there weren't that many, I guess, Polynesians in the game, really. And mm. now you're starting to see them a lot more. There's a lot more Polynesians coming up in the college softball world. And so, yeah, that's just something that's my favorite flower and just being able to kind of set me apart, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, this year they also put the gold on for the Olympics as well. So that was that's a, that's a nice touch that uh, that Rawlings has done. You guys have, I mean, you've been using a Rawlings glove. I mean, well, I think Oklahoma, you guys were worth for for a year yeah, or two, right? Pretty much, yeah, same thing. Uh, yeah, I've been using it. I guess since high school, actually, just because my sister, she was at OU and she'd give me. She's a lefty as well, and so she'd give me her old stuff that she wouldn't use. And so yeah, I just kind of got used to it and I loved it. And then. Obviously, at Oklahoma, we – well, it was worth at the time at Rawlings. Um, so, I mean, we used that for when we won the national championship. OU mm. is still using Rawlings as, you know, they're in their continued success. And so, yeah, it's just been a company that I'm comfortable with and a company that has obviously, like, helped me in some of the success that I've had. Absolutely. So what does the future hold, obviously, after the – training hard for the Olympics next year? You're hopefully going to play with the scrap, you know, scrap yards or scrap. What is, what's the name of the scrap team? Yard sports. Oh, scrap yeah. yard sports. Okay. So we'll be on the lookout because people have said that if the games do go on, you could stream them online, which we'll post and all that stuff. So um, are you going to, you know, do you want to do lessons? Do you want to get into coaching? I know that you said you're kind of helping out at Oklahoma. What, what's the future hold? Um, obviously in the softball world, I would imagine you want to, you want to be in. Yeah. Um, that's so hard to say. I mean, I think yeah. especially with, our softball world, you know, from 2013 till now, I think every year it's just kind of like a reevaluating period. Mm. And it's like every you have to take like every year, year to year time. I mean, when I was uh, when I was in college, 2013, I never thought I was going to be playing in Japan, and so it's mm. just I didn't think I was going to be playing in Japan for five and a half years. And it's just yeah, I think every year it's like when I look at the, when I look back, I'm like I didn't think I was going to be in this position a mm. year today and so currently like in the off season I give pitching lessons and I really do enjoy that so which you know a year ago today I didn't think I would be saying that mm. I would be doing that but I do enjoy giving lessons so I definitely see that in the future um and you know I I don't think I'm ready to retire I think you know a lot of nah. people you know, it's like 2020 or the 2021 Olympics, that's kind of like the pinnacle. And so people are like, okay, after that, it seems like it would be a good time to retire. Um, I, I don't know, I feel like seeing some of the best pitchers right now in their mid 30s, that's kind mm -hmm. of inspiring. And so, you know, I still want to try to keep playing after the Olympics. I don't know um, how long, but yeah, we'll see. <laughs> All right, so we'll be on the lookout for that. All right, so this is kind of the, the last question. Um, I, I asked it to Kelsey Stewart, who's, who's also on the Team USA. So you guys go, you know, next year, you guys kick some ass, you guys win the gold medal, and they make a movie, right, about you guys. Who's playing you in the movie? She said Beyonce, so that's off the oh, – that's wow. Yeah, that's off the – you can't say Beyonce. I know that's what you were going to say, so you we can't – She's not – as well just call it the Kelsey Stewart movie if Beyonce's <laughs> playing her. <laughs> oh, man. That is so hard. I could yeah. only think of Napoleon Dynamite because everyone calls me Napoleon Dynamite, but it's like he's a guy. I yeah. guess just put a wig on him. Yeah. What is, what is that actor's name? Uh, John something, I think. Yeah. John yeah, something, John yeah. Something. yeah. yeah, yeah. I know it's a guy. I'm going to put a wig on and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right that's awesome well we'll probably do a giveaway based off this, this this podcast video with one of these rawlings liberty gloves we'll get we'll get rawlings on board with that so we'll get it uh this is kind of your your liberty like signature model for this year 2021 so we'll get that that going and i hope you stay safe healthy and and make us proud next year all right thank you you as well thanks for having me no wor no worries it was a pleasure to talk to you all right thanks bye